Market Blaster, where we blow apart the stock market and put it back together so that it makes sense for you. I'm Forbes Markets Editor John Dobis. Well, China and Japan, two of the great growth engines of the past 20 or 30 years out of Asia, continue to have data that ooze out of those two countries that tell the story of an economic slowdown. China in particular, the CPI, growing at a rate less than forecast. The PPI, the, consumer, the producer price index, has actually been negative for the past year. So China has deflationary forces. Even though it has a rising consumer economy and seven or eight percent annualized growth, that's down from 10 percent. It's impacted by the rest of the world just the way the U.S. is. When Europe slows down, China's gonna slow down too. Not to mention the fact that China has a large property bubble. The government's been trying to cool it for the past two years, but that cooling has had also a retardant effect on the Chinese economy. Chinese stocks have been no place to be for the past two years. Here's the uh, FXI right here, um, like the SPY or some other American stock indexes. China's has gone down, uh, 3295 on the FXI over a three year period, you're losing money. Baidu, one of the great growth stories, the Google of China. In fact, it is the Google of China since Google pulled out two years ago. Google, uh, I'm sorry, Baidu has kind of run out of steam. Now at 113 bucks, it made a rally up to 150 earlier this year. Google, uh, Baidu, of course, up 10 times uh, its original price just three years ago. Ctrip, big online travel agency in China, a great growth story of the OOs. Boom, it's gone down. Look at that, just headed south right there. One thing you might want to take a chance on is uh, something that is still tied to the growing Chinese consumer economy, that's outdoor advertising. Focus Media Holdings, FMCN, another kind of those, one of those sea trip type stories from the uh, 2000s. Look at here, we've got some nice technical strength up above the 200 day average, up above the 10 and the 50. So give a chance here to FMCN, Focus Media Holdings. Gold, gold has actually been uh, behaving a little bit more pleasantly than it has in the past. Gold up about 0.3%. You can see the long downtrend since uh, last year, it hit 1920 per ounce. This is actually the GLD. Maybe we've got some bottoming action right there. Silver, looking like it might be hitting bottom too. This, that's the SLV, which tracks an ounce of silver. Small cap gold miners, looks like they have formed a double bottom. From May 21st to early to late last week, we're talking about a possible double bottom in the GDXJ. That's the Junior Gold Miners Index. This is the major, the GDX, the big miners. They're already heading higher. So perhaps what this shows is that the market anticipates a move higher by gold as central banks around the world respond to all this subpar growth with more and more liquidity. That debases currencies and that's good for gold. And Gold Corp, one of the biggest gold miners out there with Newmont and Barrick. Uh, GG is looking pretty good here. Every time I look, it's kind of nudging up towards 40 bucks per share again. Well, it's time to step into the confessional and tell the good father what you've sinned. Alcoa is the first company reporting its second quarter of earnings on Monday evening. But later this week, we've got a lot of different, uh, we've got banks. We don't have Citi and uh, Goldman, but we've got some other banks reporting Wells Fargo JP Morgan on Friday. XLF. XLF is actually, this is the ETF that tracks the financial sector. It's been rising too. It bottomed out early June, 13.25. We're at about uh, 14.44. Nice little 10% move higher in the big banks. B of A got up to eight bucks. It lost some action there, but B of A arguably is moving higher since May 21st. Goldman Sachs is still looking pretty ugly right here. Carving around the bottom, uh, needs a little catalyst to move out of there. Goldman not looking technically strong. Then the big whale, of course, J.P. Morgan Chase. We'll hear a little bit more about what uh, Bruno Ixil, the London whale, and his nefarious, not nefarious, but just uh, bad adventure in trading is going to cost the bank. Uh, right around its 200 moving average, J.P.M. could break either way. What you want with companies reporting earnings are those that have analysts who have upped their profit estimates in the past 30, 60, and 90 days. Here's one for you, Intuitive Surgical. The stock doesn't report till about two weeks from now, but uh, ISRG, maker of the Da Vinci Robotic Surgery Systems, nice little technical strength above the 50, above the 10 day moving average, looking decent. Here's something I wanted to talk to you about as we admire an Escher print, strange but true. Can you have big income in a security and great price performance? Whoa! Look at this right here. This is uh, American Capital Agency Corporation. It's a mortgage REIT. Holds mortgage paper, sells it, 
Look at what the stock has done from $27 up to $34 in the past, just uh, this year, actually. And the yield is still 14.6%. You may have heard of its uh, competitor in the business, Anna Lee Mortgage, NLY, that still yields about 12.9%. Similar price action, moving from uh, $15.20 to $17 in just the past two and a half months with Anna Lee Mortgage. So, and there's other things out there. There's business development corporations. One is TICC, Technic. Technology Investment Capital Corporation, big high yield there too. Corn, the sun is still baking the Midwest. Corn is hitting new highs. This is the Techrium Corn Fund, $4.76 per bushel. We were talking about $3.60 per bushel just on June 18th. So in about two and a half weeks, we've got a substantial increase in the price of corn brought on by the drought. All of your logical plays there, Mosaic, Potash, all the uh, fertilizer companies, deer, Whatever, you know, farmers, if they have corn and they can harvest it, they're making good money. So buckle down for earnings season, watch the price of gold, and keep an eye on that corn.